Hello, I'm Jerry, and in this video, we're going to learn the basics of HTMX as quickly as possible. Let's get started. I have VS Code open, which is my code editor. You can use anything you want. I have a workspace open called HTMX Tutorial, and inside of here, I'm going to create a new file called index.html. I'm going to create a base HTML by using the exclamation mark shortcut that VS Code gives. And now I have something to start off with. So the first thing we need to do with HTMX is import the JavaScript library. It's a very small and tiny JavaScript library that gives us all of the goodies that HTMX can give us. So to do that, open your browser and navigate to htmx.org. Scroll to quick start and you should see the script tag here that has the HTMX package or download. I'm going to copy that and put it underneath the title tag inside of the head tag. The first thing we're gonna learn is a simple button that makes a request to a server, gets some HTML back, and then swaps it out in some kind of element. In this case, it's gonna probably gonna be a div element. So the first thing I wanna do is create the button with the text click me. I'm gonna make a new line here, and I'm going to write hx get. This means that when an event happens on this button, it's going to make a get request to whatever's in this quotes. Next, I'm going to write what exactly is going to trigger this request. We call that an hx trigger and we're going to make that a click event. Now we want to target some kind of element to replace the HTML already existing in that element with this new response coming back from the server. At this moment, we don't have an element. So let's go ahead and make a, a very simple div element above the button. I'm just going to call it parent div. So now that we have parent div, I'm going to copy that into hx target. And then I'm going to write hx swap inner HTML. This means that instead of replacing the entirety of parent div, it's just going to add it inside of the inner HTML of this div. If I wrote outer HTML, this would replace the entire div element with whatever's being returned from the server. But as you can tell, there's nothing in the hx get here. So we need some kind of server that can return HTML here so that we can populate parent div. To do that, I'm going to create a very, very, very simple Flask script, and that's just going to return some basic HTML. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our terminal, and we're going to create a Python environment. Next, we will activate this environment. Now that I am in my environment, I'm going to install the Flask library. Now let's create the server script by right-clicking and new file and writing server.py. We need a few things from Flask to be able to get it up and running. Import Flask, render template, and request. Set up the app so we can start routing. I'm going to make a test route to return some data whenever we click that button. We can do that by returning a render template. And now we need to think about what exactly we're going to return. So I'm going to write response.html. And now we have to create response.html. So we can do that by creating a new folder called templates, create a new file in templates called response.html. And let's write an h1 of I am from the server. Next, let's add a main route that returns the index.html, which I moved into the templates folder inside of here. And we also need to allow the get and post method on this test function. Let's run the Flask server and navigate to this URL here. And we see the button here. So let's go ahead and click on it and you get the response back. I am from the server. And that's coming from the response.html. What happens is when we click on click me, it makes a get request to this function here called test. And this returns a response.html, which is inside of here. So to show that a little clearer, let's add a sleep inside of this. This will sleep for two seconds. Let's also import the time function, refresh this page, and let's hit click me again. And as you noticed, it took about two seconds for this HTML to come inside. Back to our index.html, we can use hx get, but we can also change this to post. And the same thing happens again. We can also change trigger to occur on some other kind of event like mouse enter, for example. So now when I hover my mouse over the button, it will immediately trigger the event and call the server. Let's change this back to click, right click, inspect the web page and go to network, click, click me, and you'll notice test comes back with the response as we saw in the server. Using the network tool can show you what kind of responses are coming back from the server. The beauty of HTMX is that you are allowed to use this on practically any element. So if I were to change this to an A tag instead of a button, I could do the exact same thing. So hit refresh and then tap click me and you see I am from the server. I'm going to change the server sleep time from two seconds to one. I could also make this a simple div element. Refresh this page, tap click me, and 
same thing happens. Let's go to another example. This time, let's use a form and submit that form to the server, get a response back with dynamic data inside of it. So let's delete this existing code and create a new form. I'm going to create um, a basic layout of first name, last name, and email. Now that we have this, let's create a button. Now you'll notice that instead of using a type of submit here, I just have a button by itself. And that's because we're going to attach our attributes to the form element here at the top. So coming back here, I'm going to write hx post and we can just do slash form here. We have to create a target. Let's call this form message hx swap outer html this time. Now let's create the div element for form message and my prettier extension is automatically correcting this. So it's just the same thing, but it's just on one line in this case. Now that we have all of this created, we do need the form endpoint. So we have to come back to our server.py file and we have to create a new route. This time we'll come to the bottom. We'll write a route for slash form that only accepts post. Let's call this function form. We will print out the request so we can see what's actually being sent to this endpoint. Add another sleep so we can see a slower response. And now we have to return the template that we are interested in showing the user. So let's go up to templates and create this form response file. I wrote this is the form response and that will be returned inside of this. So let's refresh this page. Let's enter in some details here, hit submit. And as you can see in our flask console, we see the first name Jerry hacks and email of a.a.com. Exactly what we wrote here. So really nice that we don't have to pretty much do any of this. So now what we can do is take this data that we get inside of request.form and now let's populate something in, in form response.html and send that back in here so that we can show some dynamic data. A good way to do that in Flask is just to write payload request.form. Now let's change this to payload.firstName. Let's fill this out again, hit submit, and we get thanks Jerry. Awesome. So what happened is that when we did this HTMX request, we sent the request to the server and we were able to respond from the server with the first name that we had in here and easily swapped out the form message div element with our new server message. How easy was that? HTMX comes with a bunch of other goodies that we can use with forms and anything else. Let's add a way to show the user a are you sure modal. So the way we can do that is by writing hx dash confirm with the message that we want to show the user. So now when the user hits submit, we're going to show an are you sure message with an OK and cancel button. So if I hit cancel, nothing happens. But if I hit OK, the request proceeds. Amazing. So no extra JavaScript was needed to be able to do this. HTMX took care of all of that for us. Another common use case in HTMX is to show a loading indicator when a request is happening. Since HTMX is all about making a request and swapping out elements, it's usually pretty important to show some kind of loading indicator. I'm going to keep everything the same as it is. At the bottom here, we're going to add another element. We're just going to use a simple paragraph that says loading. Now when we refresh our page, you'll see that loading shows up automatically. So we have to set it to a display of none so that it is hidden when the page loads and no request is actually happening. So the way we can do that is by just adding a style tag at the top here underneath script. And I'm going to call this HTMX indicator and we'll give it a display of none. So let's add that class to our paragraph. Refresh and you'll see no loading message is shown. Anytime HTMX performs a request, it gives us access to an attribute called HX indicator. What this does is that HTMX will look at the element that we set on HX indicator and add another class to it called HTMX dash request. Now the reason why that's important is that we can set our class styles in here to respond appropriately when we see that HTMX request class added to it. For example, in here, if HTMX dash request is added to a class with HTMX dash indicator, we can set the display to inline so that we can actually show it. And then once the request is complete, HTMX will remove that HTMX dash request class from wherever we've set it here, which will then let it go back to a display of none. Let's show that in action here. So I'm going to set HX dash indicator to this. I'm going to 
give this an ID of loading. And inside of here, let's give it loading. And now what we need to do is add the support for HTMX indicator with the re HTMX request. So I wrote HTMX indicator with the request class. We'll now do a display of inline. Let's increase the server time.sleep to show it more clearly. I'm going to raise this from one to three. And back in here, let's do refresh and just fill this out again. Now I have the elements tab in the dev tools open so I can look at this PID here of loading to see what happens when I hit submit you'll notice HTMX request was added in there. And then once the request was completed and we received that response, it removed the HTMX dash request. So by using this little class indicator, we're able to actually show a loading dialog anytime you want to without any need for additional JavaScript to make that happen. In most use cases, you're probably gonna use a spinner GIF or something to show a loading dialog here while the request is loading. That's it folks. We've learned a lot today. A lot of these HTMX attributes that you've learned about it should be enough to get you started on any project that you want to work on in the future. I will also be making a longer in-depth tutorial on HTMX in the upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe so I can continue to make more of these videos in the future. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Jerry.